What's up guys, this is Horseman Sam and today I'm going to be talking about the Obilab drum kit. Now I've posted a couple videos in the past uh, when I went to Anime Midwest uh, that has showcased some clips of me playing this Obilab drum kit and if you go back and watch those you know what I'm talking about. It is a fully cardboard and fiberglass drum kit made in France and I think it's one of the coolest things that I've ever purchased. And today I'm going to be talking about the Obilab drum kit and why I think it's a really good starter kit for beginner drummers or it's just an overall good drum kit for veteran drummers. Now if you go to obilab.com, that's O-B-I-L-A-B.com, they have everything that you need to know on their website. So they have the drum kit, and they also have something called the drum kid, which is just a miniature version of their full-size cardboard drum kit. They also have social media pages, and you can find them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'll leave the links in the description. They also have a fact page. So if you have any questions about ordering, shipping, uh, how it sounds, how's the durability of one of that, there's a whole page full of questions that will probably answer the majority of the ones that you're probably going to be asking them. On top of that, they also have a tutorial page about their kick pedal for their bass drum. The video teaches you how to get a better pedal bounce off the uh, kick pedal when you use it. So I do recommend checking that video out. So the drum kit actually just comes in a massive box that you can kind of wear as a backpack. The best part is that all the pieces can fit inside the box that is used as your bass drum and the floor tom. And everything is really nice and compact, which allows it to be carried around in just one massive box as a backpack, which also keeps it lightweight. Now if you go back to the Obilab website and you scroll down a little bit, you'll see all the pieces that are included in the drum kit and their names. And it's not the names that you would normally assign to drum pieces. Usually you would have a snare, a bass, some toms, some cymbals, a floor tom, maybe a hi-hat, you know, whatnot. But they actually give their pieces names. So the stool that you sit on, that's also used as a hand percussion piece and which is what has the straps for the backpack, that's called Sydney. The bass drum, which is also called the kick drum, is called Bob. You can use that as the floor tom, like I said earlier. The snare is called Captain, and you can actually use that as a rim shot when you hit it flat. The hi-hat is called Hi Charlie, which can be used as, like I said, a hi-hat, or you can just pull it off and use it as an individual hand shaker. And the other tom piece that goes between Bob and Captain is called Tim Tom, which is used for the higher sounds in the center and the lower sounds on the edges. And then obviously the kit also comes with its own set of drumsticks. You don't have to use these drumsticks, you can use your own, depending on how thick you like yours, how long, the weight, and if you like wood tips or not. Now as for sound quality, I think it actually sounds really cool. This is supposed to be an acoustic drum kit. You know, you're not supposed to bang on it and get really loud snares or you're not supposed to kick the bass drum and get a really deep bassy sound that you would normally get from a standard drum set. A lot of these sounds sound like how you imagine hitting cardboard would be. A lot of it's really flat, it's not overly loud. You have one hi-hat piece, one snare piece, and a few tom pieces, and one bass drum, and then you have the stool. So while the kit is still relatively small, you still have a good variety of sounds that you can get out of the drum kit. Now since this is a smaller drum kit, it's not meant to be played, you know, like insanely fast or insanely hard. Granted, I have and I've kind of beaten the crap out of it because of that, um, and it's actually held up surprisingly well. But this is supposed to be a more of an urban style drum kit as they describe it, so being acoustic and being lightweight and being made out of cardboard, it's meant to be played with sort of a lighter touch. Now if you're wondering what the Obi Live actually sounds like, you can either go back and try to watch some of my old videos, or continue watching through this one, or if you go back to the Obi Live website, they have videos of other people playing their drum kit out on the streets, and they have a couple sound recordings of people playing their drum kit to show off what kind of grooves that uh, you can get out of this drum kit and what it sort of sounds like. Now like I mentioned before, the Obi Live drum kit is made out of cardboard and fiberglass which helps keep it lightweight. I think all the pieces combined actually weigh less than 5 pounds, actually it might be lighter than that now that I think about it, which really helps out with portability and assembly. But since it is made out of cardboard, it isn't the most durable drum kit in the world. No. If you hit it too hard, you will put dents in it, or you might break some of the fiberglass bits on it. I already have, actually. If you hit it too hard too many times in one area, then the cardboard will start to bend. It will start to crinkle at the edges and whatnot. So you do have to be kind of careful of 
you know, how you're transporting it, if it's got to be knocked around and banged up all the time, or if you're smacking it too hard like I have, then a lot of the fiberglass bits are, are going to rip apart. I've actually pulled out one of the arms for one of the supporting stands for the hi-hat piece, which I actually had to go back and uh, hot glue back together. What I recommend to counteract this uh, is wrapping the edges of the obi -Wab drum kit with duct tape, actually. Uh, I've done that on mine. Uh, not only does it help from the edges from kind of tearing and getting banged up, I think it actually looks kind of cool now with the little white accents running around the edges and it makes the drum kit more durable overall. Now since the drum kit is completely made out of cardboard, it also allows you to decorate however you see fit. So you can put stickers on it, you can color with um, markers or color pencils or crayons or something, which really helps it stand out as your drum kit and I think that really adds to, one to, the, uh, to the cool factor. I would also like to mention that the snare piece and the hi-hat piece are actually filled with rice, which is what makes that little rattling sound. I do have to warn that if you do hit the snare piece too hard, the center bit might rip apart. It hasn't ripped apart on me yet, uh, but you know, fingers crossed just waiting for the day. However, I have actually broken open the backside of my hi-hat piece to the point where some of the rice has actually spilled out. Now the majority of the rice is still in the hi-hat piece, but again, I would recommend just wrapping it up with some duct tape, making sure that it's closed off and that none of it can get out. And finally, the price. Obilab Music charges the standard drum kit at 119 euros. So 119 euros actually comes out to about 139 US dollars and 94 cents. So roughly 140 dollars. Which actually isn't a bad price for what you're paying for. I mean most new drum kits can go upwards towards a thousand dollars depending on what you're getting. And even some used drum kits can still be two, three, four, five hundred dollars. So $140 for a really cool portable acoustic drum kit to me is worth it. However, since they don't technically ship to the US, what you actually have to do is email them asking for them to ship it to you and just say, Hey, I live in the States. I would really like your drum kit. Is there any way I can go about that? And there is actually. What they have you do is PayPal them and then once the money goes through, then they'll ship it to you. And then shipping usually takes less than a week actually, which I was very impressed by. Mine shipped through FedEx, so that might be, you know, a factor in how long shipping might take. But it took about five days for them to get it here and I was very impressed. Now the price of the drum kit is one thing. What might be the breaking point for some is the shipping cost. Now keep in mind you're paying $140 originally for the drum kit by itself. But since they're shipping it internationally, you have to pay what is almost another $100 on top of it. So in total, I actually spend just over 237 American dollars for the Obi Lab kit and for shipping. And that's probably going to be where some people might want to hold back because shipping so much. I totally understand paying almost $100 for a cardboard drum kit to be shipped across the sea is a little bit high but to me it was well worth it you know i've had a great time using the drum kit it's really fun to play i've had no negative experiences so at that point it just depends on whether you're a financially stable and b if you do have the finances if spending that much is really worth it to you overall i think the obi lab drum kit is actually really really cool I've only used it a few times uh, when I was in Chicago for Anime Midwest when I would just sit down, set it up, and just play some music. I noticed that a lot of people would stop by and a lot of people would ask like, hey man, what is this? I've never seen this before. Did you make it? And I would, I would tell everybody like, no dude, I actually got this from Obilab and they're from France. And I would run through the same story that I just told you guys, you know, you have to pay for shipping. Everything's cardboard, there's a lot of fiberglass everywhere. And a lot of people were really impressed and I even let a few people play on it themselves. Uh, I got a lot of pictures. I had a couple uh, photographers ask me about it. I had one person uh, interview me about it. So the drum kit does get attention. And remember, all attention is good attention. I plan on keeping this drum kit around for quite a long time, you know, so long as the cardboard survives and I don't go being the crap out of it and fingers crossed that it doesn't catch on fire either. 
but the Obilab drum kit is probably one of my favorite drum kits that I've ever played on. Now if you're a newer drummer and you're trying to get a kit that's not too expensive but still a really good piece to practice on, then Obilab is definitely for you. Uh, if you have a kid or you're a little bit smaller, I would look at Obi, uh, the Obilab drum kid, K-I-D, and even if you're a longtime veteran drummer like you've been playing for 10, 15, 20 years, the Obilab drum kit is still something I would recommend checking out. Like if you plan on having acoustic sessions or you're just going to be jamming out at a local bar one night and don't want to be lugging around a huge full-size drum kit, Obilab would be absolutely perfect. It's still loud enough to where people can hear from a pretty good distance away. And even then you can still set up some condenser mics and hook it up to an amp and make it you know, just a little bit louder. Overall, I would give the Obilab drum kit a 9 out of 10. It's really lightweight, it's really portable, it sounds great, it's good for all types of drummers. It's really fun and it gets a lot of attention and I have had an amazing experience playing it. I'm not giving it a 10 out of 10 because shipping is so expensive and since it is cardboard that takes a little bit away from the durability factor but that can easily be overcome if you just wrap it around into a little bit of tape or you can line the undersides of some of the bits or the inside with some plastic uh, pieces and that should take care of it. Anyways this has been Horseman Sam, this has been the Obi Live Drum Kit, I would highly recommend going and checking it out and I'll see you guys next time.